some serious cracks are starting to appear in Boris Johnson's massive majority. Things are so bad that the Prime Minister had to call on Michael Gove to help put out the fire that is the rebellion over these new restrictions. So, a row erupted over claims by the Cabinet Office Minister Michael Gove that the NHS, including the special purpose Nightingale hospitals, could be, and I quote, physically overwhelmed. So, writing in the Times on Friday, Michael Gove said that the decision to impose a second national lockdown had been taken when ministers were shown a dramatic image of rising cases and the Nightingale hospitals at full capacity. Gove said every bed, every ward occupied in the Times article. It seems that he's using this to scare rebel conservatives and to get them to fall into line. He told Tory MPs that the national interest demanded that they take responsibility for these difficult decisions. To add some extra Boris oomph, the Prime Minister wrote to each MP and told them that the new tier system would end on the 3rd of February and it would be reviewed every two weeks. He also promised, well, however much Boris Johnson can be trusted with a promise, anyway, he promised that economic and social impacts would be analysed and presented. So, the rebels have been defeated. Well, the rebels pointed to a report in The Observer where the health minister, Nadine Dorries, had told a group of MPs recently that the Nightingale hospitals were in reality nowhere near capacity and that the department was having problems finding staff to run them. An NHS spokesperson some days later confirmed that just two of the seven Nightingale hospitals had admitted patients, the others hadn't. One Tory MP, Tobias Elwood, is saying that he may vote against the government next Tuesday, saying, and I quote, Michael Gove has been completely disingenuous because every one of the Nightingale hospitals is underused. They are largely dormant. 99% of England's population is under either Tier 2 or Tier 3, and many Tory MPs are saying that the new tier system is imposing excessively tight restrictions on some areas that have fewer cases, but simply border areas with higher numbers. They said that they want the borders to be redrawn at the more local level, not decided from London. A potential threat to Boris Johnson's own position could come in the form of the vice chairman of the 1922 committee. Charles Walker has been talking about how he would vote against the government and how he has been receiving more and more emails from business owners asking how they can survive. At the moment, Boris Johnson can rely on the Labour Party to get his measures over the line, but that may be limited. There's growing disquiet in the opposition as many Labour supporters are unhappy with Keir Starmer's instructing MPs to support the government here. A few wrong turns and Boris Johnson could be looking for a new flat. Boris is having to make compromises and it seems to be happening behind closed doors. He's hoping to avoid a rebellion by giving in to some of the demands of the rebels. Now, this is absolute madness because the Prime Minister is basically negotiating the health and well-being of the British people with the likes of the ERG. Tory rebels, who either do not think that there is a pandemic, don't agree with the lockdowns and want the pandemic to rip through the country, or believe that basic restrictions are good enough, are holding the government to ransom. They are steering policy. We saw this before with the ERG and Brexit. These people have no interest in protecting the British public. They want to do as little as possible and get citizens back to work, irrespective of the damage it's going to do to them. Boris Johnson and Michael Gove are attempting to pull the wool over the eyes of the rebels and use tactics that they would normally use against the opposition or Remainers back in the Brexit days. Lie and then invoke the national interest card. I don't know if this is going to work on these people though. I will not even ask if Boris Johnson is listening to the scientists anymore because that ship has long sailed. It is not a battle between science and anti-science now. It's a battle between Boris Johnson and the flat earthers at the Covid recovery group. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.